Hello, we have a quick announcement to make. We are currently offering a free trial period for any Trove database. Email info at firstsom.com for more information on this great opportunity. Over to Mike. If you saw our recent video on the Iraqi licensing round, very, very popular, got a lot of good feedback from that. And we thought we'd show another area, very, very interesting, the Trinidad and Tobago shallow water licensing round. Now, it started out in uh, 2023, but it's going to close soon in 2024. So uh, stay tuned and have a look at the story. So here's a location map. We can see Trinidad and Tobago. It's a relatively small area. We're going to have a look at uh, the petroleum geology of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm going to do it in a handful of slides in very, very little time. Here's a map showing Trinidad and Tobago. And if we start here up in the northwest, we can see the uh, North Coast Marine area. We've got some of the younger basins up here and, and a regional high and a trend which has got a number of discoveries on it, mainly uh, gas fields. Then as we come down into the East Coast Marine, a kind of complex history here. Columbus Basin, it's um, mainly Miocene to Pleistocene in age, but uh, complex interaction. You can see the differing fault trends in here. And we've also got the late inclusion and uh, prograding Orinoco River Delta accumulating over much of the region. Finally, the Gulf of Paria in the offshore area and there's a description of that kind of a complex story for this basin as well but here compressional tectonics is the main feature so here's an extract from our trove database for this region showing the regional tectonic setting now structural evolution plate tectonics very complicated we've got the interaction of uh, many sort of caribbean microplates and then a later overprinting of the paleo orinoco river deposition generally these are young tertiary basins and uh, you've got overprint of uh, the babis the esquibo the uh, copanane rivers which uh, have drained the huge shield area of venezuela and brazil and various other coastal countries and they've poured sediment into this region through the tertiary. With Trove, you can quickly assess a variety of models and interpretation to understand the differences, similarities, and implications for different basins and plays. Now, if you're looking for more information, well, you've got to subscribe to Trove. Why? That's just a small part of our stratigraphy this region. You can see we have stratigraphic schemes for all the different regions, whether it be Trinidad and Tobago, Suriname and French Guiana, or indeed Guyana itself. We also have geochemistry, all the source rock information, maturity, and various write-ups. And this is getting added to all the time. In terms of structural geology, just trying to understand the evolution of, of, at a play level. What we can see here, this is in the North Coast Marine area. We can see bright galore, the basement on lap to the south. It was thickening to the north, but lots of bright amplitude anomalies it's an oligomyosine and younger sediments there's great acoustic impedance contrast and it kind of helps de-risk expiration drilling with these uh, amplitude versus offset or hydrocarbon indicator type studies lots of interesting looking things just on this single line here another line this time from the columbus basin and what we can see here is we can see the uh, pleistocene and uh, pliocene reservoirs from the paleo orinoco the source rocks in this region tend to be gas prone so lots and lots of gas condensate potential in the region it tends to be quite mature for exploration there's been a lot of drilling over the years but deeper potential exists and some stratigraphic traps probably worth uh, investigating so uh, this is the uh, the map showing the line indicated here seismic line a a prime now moving on to the uh, the gulf of pariah and you can see here this is on the west coast and here's the uh, location of this line here a a prime and it's going to the kuva marine block what we can see uh, on on the seismic lots and lots of uh, amplitudes sort of interesting things going on we know that there's oil and condensate and biogenic gas all proven in this base and indeed in this block. The water depth here is somewhere in the region of 0 to 50 metres. And um, although uh, in, the, in the documentation that was put out, it said that the Kuva Marine had uh, produced 226 million barrels. Actually, that's wrong. It was 226 
thousand barrels. It is quite a small field, about three wells on it, but it does show that there is uh, hydrocarbon on block and it has been uh, actually produced back in the day. Now, I quite like this, uh, included in the package that you get from the uh, Trindadian authorities. You can see, um, you know, here, a good tie to, from the seismic to the logs, and, and likewise for these deeper Durham sands and the Sumsum sands. And you can see the quite nice boxcar-shaped sands, developed, well-developed, nice clean sands, and lots of potential to uh, follow these and map these around. So let's have a look at the Trinidad and Tobago 2023 licensing round. So here are the blocks on offer. They're highlighted here on uh, in orange. The, the pink blocks are the licensed areas in the shallow water. And uh, you can see they're all named and numbered there. There's um, 13 blocks shown. The shallow uh, competitive bid round opened on the 3rd of October 2023. And the deadline for submission is noon on May the 27th, 2024, about sort of six weeks away. Successful bids will be announced four months after the close of bidding. The uh, production sharing contract, this is what it would look like, um, an extract from it. Terms and conditions, well, there's an, an initial eight-year period for each of the blocks within the uh, production sharing contract, an initial period which is compulsory, and then two optional periods uh, during that eight years. Now, upon the achievement of a commercial discovery, the license can be renewed, uh, indeed just the, the small area uh, pertaining to the field, for a period of up to 25 years from the uh, effective date of the production sharing contract. So sufficient time to develop and produce and uh, to decommission the field. Now, if no commercial discovery is made, the license terminates automatically. In terms of data packages, well, there's lots of 2D data, there's some 3D data, there are lots of wells. But there's also information about the local content and local participation framework, and indeed the National Oil Spill Contingency Plan, all available online. In terms of the seismic data, you can see lots of 2D and indeed some 3D, and some of this is actually covering the areas that are up in the round here. Pause the video uh, if you would like to see more details. In terms of the uh, the well data, we have this uh, blown up within our Trove database, but here you can get a flavour of where the wells are that have been released and are in the well packages that can be obtained from the regulator. There is also uh, an online virtual data room, and, and that's being uh, run by uh, or using the link system. So uh, a great opportunity to actually have a look at the data. Now, here's a sort of a, an overview of the uh, shallow water competitive bidding round 2023 slash 2024. 96 nominations were received from 10 companies. Legal notices were given and the... Um, the bid round was actually extended until the uh, May the 27th, 2024. Now, changes were made for this. The royalty stands at 12.5% to be paid to the minister. And you can see that a windfall tax has been reduced and cost recovery up to 60% will be allowed. The uh, expiration period has been extended from six to eight years. And there's an introduction of inf infrastructure sharing policy. The bid round process is laid out here, and here are the blocks again listed for the ones that are, are available. Now the process, the pre-bid, the bid, and the post-bid, you can read um, what's required here. Pause the video if you want further information on the terms and conditions of the, the bidding process. Now in terms of commercial terms, there's a lot more information than this available on the Government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago website. Discoveries in block. Now, if we look, this is our trove entry for the Anol Discovery and the Kuvo Marine. You can see the uh, various information that we have for those two. Now, Kuvo Marine was discovered in 1968, and it was actually, uh, it actually ceased production some eight years later in 1976. It was uh, tertiary clastic manzanilla formation with a 38.6 API oil. And you can see it was uh, it is a kind of small accumulation, but certainly proves a working petroleum system on block. And uh, here's another example, this time from the Columbus Basin, and it shows the uh, teak field discovered in 1968. It started production in 1972 with uh, operator Repsol. Now again, it's uh, tertiary reservoirs, 30 API oil, 
with a, a, a gas in place of one and a half TCF and a stoic of some 380 million barrels of oil. This is the sort of information that you'd get from Trove. And another example here, the Greater Angostura, discovered in 1999. Gas production was started in 2004, and then oil in 2005. BHP Billiton are the current operator. It's uh, tertiary reservoirs, plastic. The reserves range is quoted from 90 to 300 million barrels, with a P50 quoted at 160 million barrels. Gas, thought to be somewhere in the range of 1 to 2.3 TCF recoverable. So let's have a look now at uh, Trinidad and Tobago in the, the sort of the global context. And here you can see global gas production, South and Central America here highlighted in red. So the, the region uh, has a sort of thin slither right now. If we blow that up, you can see the contribution from Trinidad and Tobago. And if we look at Trinidad and Tobago on its own, you can see that there's been a significant increase in gas production through the uh, the early 2000s, uh, reaching a, a peak in around about 2010. Since then, uh, been on a sort of a major decline. In terms of oil, well, here we are, the uh, the global oil production, and you can see here we are in the sort of the, the high 90 million barrels of oil per day. And here's uh, South and Central America highlighted in green. If we look at that, well, you can see Trinidad and Tobago is actually a very minor contributor within the region and if we look at it on its own really it's been a, a period of declining oil production for quite a, a number of decades now really since this high in the uh, sort of 2006 2007 period well, there's been a decline from around about 175 um, thousand barrels of oil per day down to here around about 80 thousand barrels a day in 2022 the assets that you get in trove the, here they are listed all these in dark blue we have information on every single one of these assets but not only that we have all of these assets from guyana and you'll recognize quite a number of the significant finds that have been made in the last decade particularly uh, by exxon mobil and likewise for for suriname other operators like uh, total energies and apa to name but two there are the number of opportunities and assets that we have covered within trove now what you see here um, 242 assets within trinidad and tobago 134 in suriname 121 in guyana uh, we have the operators we have the fluid types and you can see a total of 156 fields a lot of those are actually onshore Trinidad and Tobago. Um, only a few uh, developed in the offshore regions, um, particularly away from Trinidad and Tobago. Prospects, we have 111 of them uh, with detailed information. 106 uh, discoveries in a variety of basins and uh, a variety of ages, but predominantly Cretaceous and tertiary in age. That's the sort of information that's held in our Trove database. Now we also can have lots and lots of maps. These are here to inspire geoscientists just looking around and all the different maps that are presented here. Kind of makes you think. We've even got uh, oil concession maps going back to uh, 1918 for onshore, uh, onshore Trinidad, but a lot more recent maps also. And this is just a portion of what's held within this uh, particular database. Now, as well as the maps, we have information on fields like the Lisa field. We've got uh, cross sections, we've got seismic lines, uh, we've got write-ups on the project, you can see the infrastructure, you can also get some information as the, uh, the early years of, of production data. And it's all contained in one, one quick, easy to find place, click of a button, and there's all the information right before your eyes. Um, Ranger, well this is a Guyana a carbonate oil discovery. Again it's in the Starbrook block, it was made by ExxonMobil, but uh, here's all the information you can see uh, about that uh, discovery. Well, the, the information that's made it into the public domain anyway. And uh, finally Zadeus, that's in uh, French Guyana. An oil discovery, it was appraised, uh, it was never moved forward, but uh, again proof that there's uh, a working petroleum system uh, quite a long way east of uh, where currently exploration has been targeted. Now, if we look at uh, Venezuela, this is also included in here. And uh, that's just to, to really 
you know, set the scene and uh, look at what's going on in the adjacent area. Now, it's not all of Venezuela. In this particular database, we only do the eastern part, but we also have it in uh, a trove for the entirety of Venezuela, for those who are interested. We even uh, look at uh, things like border disputes and you know, as, as information for that uh, grows, we'll keep adding to this section. So stay up to date with what's happening and, and what's been, what the background and history of it is. And then again, for the East Venezuelan Basin, we've got lots of information compiled. A lot of the different well designs that are used in different basins, in different fields, in different parts of Eastern Venezuela. And uh, likewise, uh, just these little summaries here. Really, really useful just to understand the sorts of plays, the sorts of accumulations uh, that have been found in eastern Venezuela. So that's the sort of information. Essentially everything within that uh, red dotted line, that's all contained within the uh, the Trove database and it's updated on a daily basis. Now, you know, you can have access to that it's a scouting service. It's an analog database, all the historic information. And our researchers keep looking to find more and more information that we can add in here that actually fills in the gaps and fills in the blanks going all the way, way back through time. Now, in summary, Trinidad and Tobago, shallow water licensing round. The deadline, 27th of May. Now, there are multiple basins here, multiple plays, and varied exploration potential. The area in the northwest, the Dobega Basin, and um, that, that region looks very, very exciting. Not particularly well explored, whereas somewhere like the um, Columbus Basin, it's a lot more mature. Now, Trinidad and Tobago are keen to halt the recent declining oil and gas production. So, I think what you find is they're very cooperative. It's a transparent and, and, and encouraging business environment. Now, every field, discovery, analogue and subsurface summary is all held in our Trove Latin America North database. Not just Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, Suriname, French Guiana and indeed Eastern Venezuela. So while you're promoting a licensing round, we've now shown what we can do with Iraq. We've shown what we can do with Trinidad and Tobago. What about your country? If you're a government regulator, if you're a seismic company with multi-client surveys, our Trove News reaches thousands of geologists and geoscientists and new ventures people all around the globe. So if you've got uh, geological reports or services, special studies like seeps, sedimentology, gravity and magnetic, whatever it is, you know, write into us and see if we can get that all included when we do our next license round promotion. Remember, we have worldwide coverage and we've got a worldwide audience. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.